welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Rachel Nicole and in today's video of Q&A with the QA engineer, I will be talking to you guys about why every team needs a QA engineer. So I'll give you a few seconds to grab your snacks, tea, and I'd appreciate it if you like this video before we get rolling. So this is going to be a little bit different than my other episodes of Q&A with the QA engineer because I'm going to read from some notes, I'm going to be doing a little get ready with me, and the reason why I'm doing the get ready with me is because, like I said, I gotta read from my notes because, yes, I'm going to be sharing my own personal experience and why I believe every team needs a QA engineer. At the same time, since I've only been in the industry for less than a year, I think it would be a little bit more like beneficial for you guys if I were to ask people who have at least like 10 plus years of experience in the industry to give you guys the best information possible as to why it's really crucial to have a QA engineer on all of your software development teams. Alright, so we're about to get started with this, but pretty much. First and foremost, the main priority of QA engineers, it's not just about simple testing. Not only is our goal to create quality products, but our main goal is to prevent defects. Pretty much we have to verify the quality of the development process and its results. So I already put foundation on my face right now. I'm just going to put some concealer on to brighten up my face. But pretty much a defect is a bug. And it also means a flawed piece of code. So this can actually cause a system to fail. So just because you have a defect or a bug in your application, that doesn't always mean that the functionality doesn't work in the product itself. It also, it might just mean that it doesn't work correctly. So if you're wondering what QA engineers do, we identify the weaknesses and inconsistencies in the product or all product stages. We help define the project requirements. We provide comprehensive information about the level of quality for a product. And we also test the product during all phases of the software development life cycle, which is also known as SDLC. It's important to note that QAs are interested in making the product user friendly, whether if it's functionality or design. Okay, so during the first meeting, clients typically describe in general what they want. So this pretty much outlines the functionality of the desired app or service and the features that it should or shouldn't include. So in a lot of companies, the examination of functional requirements is normally done by the business analyst. However, since they can't guarantee the compatibility of the technical components, that's where the QA engineers come into play. That's why the business analysts share this stage with the other experts. So pretty much during this meeting, the first thing includes analyzing and deciding whether the requirements can be integrated within a single system. The second thing that comes into play is which solutions will or won't work during the application. And the third thing is planning the required software development testing stages and techniques. Validation is the process of evaluating a product before the development starts to find out whether the product will meet the user's expectations and if the idea is worth putting the effort into. So during this stage, the quality engineers collaborate with the business analysts to research the degree to which a software product can satisfy the user's needs. Basically, they check whether the product makes sense to the users and to the market. It's critical to gather feedback from the users to see what's missing and what can be improved, whether it's like the design, the features, and this pretty much will help create a better user experience. Unless this validation occurs, this the product may never reach an audience, even though it may be great from a technical point of view. This stage also ensures the product will deliver profit to the client. Otherwise, 
what's the point of even starting it? So let's move on to the test planning because during this stage, the quality engineers define the testing strategy. So by defining the strategy, this means estimating the time and effort. So after the requirement analysis, Quality Assurance creates a document known as the test plan. So this includes the project deliverables, we got the scope, the objective, the responsible roles, and this also defines the testing environment. So this stage is important because without this stage, the testing process is going to be full of unexpected obstacles and contingencies. So to ensure this stage follows a strict sequence of action, the quality engineer's job is to make up a document called the test plan of action. Otherwise, the process itself might be clumsy. So let's move on to the test development stage. Okay, so now that we got the test plan out the way, now it's time to set up an environment and create the test cases. So a test case is a set of steps we need to take to validate whether the software product is bug free and works according to the specific requirements. After this, we think of acceptance criteria. So that's pretty much a technical standard that a software product should meet to be successful. Then after this step, we have the test execution. So despite the importance of the previous software testing stages, most believe that QA's only job is the execution of all the test cases, of all the test cases, which is completely incorrect. Now, if some part of the system works, we typically mark it as pass. So in that way, we can ensure that we're not only missing any technical details of the product, but we also make sure that it's a quality one. Now, if a test case fails, it means that there's a defect in the code, and the QAs can send a report back to the developers so that they can check out what's going on. Some of you might be sitting there wondering, well, what is the testing cycle? So pretty much, that's the frequency which we conduct these five testing stages which is otherwise known as each sprint. So now that I've told you about the software testing life cycle, let's summarize why every team needs a QA engineer. So first point, to secure the business, you have a payment system and it works just fine. Users pay for a service and gets it. However, you didn't check the certain cases and the money goes not to you, but to a random bank account. This is big and fatal, especially if we're talking about thousands of dollars. So that is one example as to why QA is very important so that we can prevent these <laughs> horrific situations. Another thing about QA engineers that we save you money. So the diagram below it clearly shows the correlation between the life cycle stages and costs. It's more expensive to fix a bug than to prevent it. So fixing one bug may create another one. So problems could escalate pretty quickly. And you also want to protect your company's reputation. So if you launch a buggy product and a user has a bad experience with it, um, it's pretty much gonna be really difficult to persuade them that the problem is gone and that they can use the product again. So rule of thumb, First impressions are hard to change. Another point is to ensure the product's quality. So without testing the product inside and out, the product may not work properly or not at all. Testing stuff requires theoretical knowledge. So it's difficult to ensure quality if you're not a professional. And my last point here is to monitor the process. So unless the development process is being controlled to align with the specific requirements, the final product may be different than the one planned. All right, well, that's going to be all for today's episode of Q&A with the QA engineer. So if you want already a part of the family yet, what are you doing? What are you doing? Smack that subscribe and bell notification button so that you never miss another post from me again. Don't forget to comment your favorite points from this video, and if you would like me to talk about any other topics for the next episode of Q&A with the QA Engineer, I'll see you next time.